Okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the universal joint. I have my example built up right here. Grab my wrenches, hold on. And like any of these projects, it can be a bit different than the picture. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what, what worked for me on this mechanism and, and why it's kind of laid out the way it is. So one thing that is different from the picture on the laminated sheet is I do have this plate over the front. And the plate goes on top of these L brackets. And these L brackets are adjustable. They, you can adjust the angle on them. And what the universal joint does is it transfers power uh, in a straight line at zero degrees all the way up to uh, supposedly it's 90 degrees, but really I can't get it to go above 70. So about zero to 70 degrees is, is how much it can safely transfer power. Now on the back of this, I'm using a, a little sprocket for the handle. I have my bearing on the back of my girder, and then I have another bearing running parallel to it. On each side, of these bearings, there's a collar to keep that drive shaft in place. So I want to make sure that this fixed horizontal drive shaft uh, doesn't slide back and forth. Now I found out that if I have my universal joint all the way up against uh, the bearing, so I, I have this, I have this collar on, I have my universal joint on, and it's pushed all the way up against the bearing. And that gives me more range. Whoops, that came out, which is fine. So I'll show you that in a minute. Gives you more range to uh, fix your fluctuating drive shaft. Now these universal joints, they are fragile. So if you do make the angle too steep, they will break. So be careful with that. They use the same set screw as the collar and that takes the long skinny wrench. So you just want to snug it up. You don't want to over tighten it. Now on this front piece here, I have this larger U-channel that should be in your drawer and the L brackets and the flat plate should be in your drawer as well. Now one thing I got going on that's a little different here is I was trying to find uh, the whole of the bearing that would line up the best with the universal joint. And what I ended up doing was, for my drive shaft, I didn't use the center hole. Now, you might have your setup different. It kind of depends upon where you place the bearing on the girder. Now, uh, once I figured out where that's going to be lined up, I did put uh, bearings on both sides. And the reason I did that was so that the drive shaft would, would spin a little bit smoother. Uh, you might get by with one bearing here, but usually on, on drive shafts, I like them supported with two bearings. Now on this universal joint, it has this knuckle in here. And uh, these are kind of like your collars, but they're, they're cut out and it enables it to to spin at different angles. And a common place you would see this is on farm equipment. So let me try and get this back in here so that we can see how it functions. So I'm going to make sure that I got my collar snugged up with my long skinny Allen wrench so that that stays in place. And place my universal joint on there. And I'm going to snug that up as well. Just snug, not overly tight. Now you want to make sure when you're putting the drive shafts in that uh, the set screw is loose so that you can get that drive shaft to bottom out in there. And then we'll snug that up as well. Now for visual purposes, just so you can see what's happening here, I'm going to place a wheel on the end. Just 
tighten up my L brackets. It does have a bit of a range, but when you're testing it, it's good to have it in one place. So there you can see how the universal joint works. It's transferring power. Let me get that up there to the camera. It's transferring power at an angle, and it can go from zero degrees all the way up to about 70 degrees before it really starts binding up. And so this allows, like with farm equipment, if you have a trailer type uh, following you, and then you have the PTO on the tractor, that's the power takeoff, uh, it allows it to fu fluctuate as it's going across the field, whether it's mowing or, or harvesting or baling hay. Now, like with all other projects, when you finish this, uh, carefully disassemble your small pieces and get them back in the drawer. Also include your laminated sheet. Make sure you take a picture of it with your Chromebook. I had a few groups that were starting to forget that. And uh, make sure you keep track of your sign-off sheet as well. You're going to need all those materials in order after each mechanism that you finish. So until next time, good luck.